Do you have a new saltwater aquarium and you are trying to decide what fish to put in it and in which order? Well, this video is gonna talk about a fish stocking list, what fish you can have and in what order to put them in to ensure that they stay healthy and they don't go and fight each other to the death. Hi, I'm Richard from The Beginner's Reef and I'm here to help you succeed with your saltwater aquarium by providing you with great information, awesome tips and really helpful resources. If you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button and anything I mention in this video you can find in the video notes below. Make sure you stick around to the end because I've got a beginner tip that I think you can uh, really find helpful and can save you a bit of money too. So the way that this came about is that I was in the fish store the other day and I heard a new person with the saltwater aquarium talking to the fish store owner about the fish that they wanted and all the fish that they listed off were just a no, a no, no, you can't have that, can't have that yet, later, not now and that person was just devastated and it just got me thinking about how this process that I've used for years and years and years and I've told to so many other people when they're setting up their uh, aquarium so I just wanted to put this video together just to describe the process that I go through and it really really works to make sure you get the right combination of fish and also the right amount of fish so that the money that you spend on them isn't wasted when they end up dying. So there's kind of four steps or four stages to this process. Step one, how many fish can I have? Aquarium's a limited size, you can only have a limited amount of fish in there. Step two is the want list. This is basically collating every fish that you could ever want and just putting it on the list. Step three is the short list and this is where we take all the fish and we try and go through each one of them one by one and find the reasons why they can't go in your aquarium. And then step four or stage four is the order in which you purchase these fish and this is all based on aggression levels. So stage one is how many fish can I have and as I said earlier it's all about how many fish you can fit in an aquarium and it comes down to a thing called bio load and bio load is the amount of waste that the nitrifying bacteria and your filtration in your aquarium have to deal with. The more fish or the more bio load the more waste they produce and the more work your bacteria and your filtration has to do. So the way that we start this off is a general rule of thumb is one inch of fish for every five gallons of water in your aquarium. Now it doesn't sound a lot, but it's the kind of the beginner stage, it's the beginner area. If you've just got your new aquarium and it's gone through its uh, nitrogen cycle or it's currently going through its nitrogen cycle, you are going to have to really start off slow and gentle after that nitrogen cycle is finished so that you don't overwhelm the bacteria that has just grown. And the easiest way to overwhelm it is by getting too many fish and by overfeeding them. Those two things will instantly start your aquarium into a downward spiral. So one inch of fish for every five gallons. So for this instance, I'm just going to pick like a Got this 65 gallon aquarium here you can find on Marine Depot. It's really nice, good size starter aquarium. 65 gallon is big enough where you can have a good amount of fish in it. You've got a good amount of space for aquascape and coral and it's a, just a nice size, nice volume. So for 65 gallons, you basically want to divide that by five and it's going to give us 12 inches of fish. So I'm just going through doing the editing in this video and I've just realized I've just made a seriously huge mistake. 65 divided by five is not 12, it is actually 30. So for this video, we're gonna to have to imagine that we're working with a 60 gallon aquarium and not a 65 gallon. I have no idea how I screwed that up, but apparently I did. So there you are, a blooper, first one. Now, this is just the starting point so as your aquarium matures as your experience with the aquarium gets better and your maintenance gets better 
your stability of your water increases, your maintenance uh, processes get a lot better, you'll be able to bring this uh, one inch of fish down to maybe three gallons. But for the time being, we're just gonna stick with one inch per five gallons. And then over time, you can then start to see how your aquarium is, is reacting to it. And you can do that by testing your water. So this stage is basically figure out how many fish you can have per water volume. So one inch of fish for every five gallons. Okay, stage two, this is the what fish do I want or the want list. And basically this is a great way to get your family involved. And it's awesome to just put down on a list every fish that you would love to have in your aquarium. And a great way to do this is to go onto a website like saltwaterfish.com and just click on the fish tab at the top and it brings up the whole page there. You can go in, you can then click and see all the subcategories of fish and you can click into each one and you can just see then all the details about the fish. So basically just go through, put down all the ones that you like the look of. Nothing is off the page here. You can put down everything you want. You just have to remember is the more fish that you put on there, the more fish you have to look into and research. So just, uh, yeah, take it easy. Otherwise this stage could take you a, a long time. Okay, stage three is the fish shortlist. And this is basically where we take all those fish that you got in stage two and we go through each and every single one of them and look at them in detail. So the first things you wanna look at is what's the minimum tank size that it recommends for on saltwaterfish.com. If you've got something like a queen angel, you're not gonna go and put that in this 65 gallon aquarium. It's gonna be far too big. So take that straight off the list. The second thing that you want to look at is its diet. Does it have a specific diet? Uh, a mandarin dragonet are very, very popular fish and they require a huge amount of pods living in your aquarium. So they're definitely not a fish that you're gonna be putting in there when your aquarium is only six months old because they're gonna starve. They don't do well being hand fed by pellet foods and flake foods that you give all your other fish. So just look at the dietary requirements of each fish. Another thing to look at is the habitat. Where does it like to basically hang out in the tank? Is it a sand dweller? Does it like to hang out above the coral like antheas? Does it like to swim in the center section? Um, and basically you wanna try and get fish that occupy different areas of the tank so that then there's no territorial squabbles. Um, the other thing to be careful of as well is you wanna to check to make sure that the fish isn't venomous. Um, some fish have venom in their spines, uh, like the fox face rabbit fish. Um, it's got venom in its spines and if you get caught by one of those, it's really going to hurt. Same for lionfish. You know, you're going to get some serious pain if you get stabbed by one of those. So just part of the research of the fish is just look at something that is going to cause you any potential harm and just to be aware of it. It doesn't mean you can't have it, just be aware of it so that it keeps you safe when you're doing your maintenance further on. The other thing to look at when you're going through each fish is have a look on the forums. Uh, places like Reef Central, nanoreef.com, reef to reef they're all awesome forums. And basically look at the fish, put into the search engine to see if the fish is gonna be a problem. So things like flame angels have been known to nip at LPS corals or clam mantles. And if it's a, a clam that you really, really want to have further down the line, you might not want to get a flame angel or vice versa. If you want a flame angel, but you're not really too bothered about corals, then it's just something that you need to look at. So each fish, just look at all the requirements for it and basically try and find anything that's going to say, sorry, I've got to cross this off the list. Because what you're trying to do is create a list of bulletproof fish that are going to really do well in your aquarium and are going to survive and they're going to live in harmony. Living in harmony is the, the last piece of this bit and it's basically checking that the fish are compatible with one another. So by the time you get down to the end of your short list, let's say you're gonna have say half a dozen fish for this aquarium. You wanna come and check the reef compatibility chart. And I've got one on the beginner's reef. 
you can find the link to it in the description below and basically it's just a case of go find the fish that you want go across and check it off against all the other fish that you want to have as well just to make sure that they're going to live in harmony because if they're going to start fighting then one of them is going to end up dying and it's just going to cost you money that maybe you don't have you know it's, it's a waste spending 50 60 70 bucks on a fish and then it gets killed within the first two days because it's not compatible with one of the other fish that's in the aquarium so just check out the fish size or the aquarium size for the fish check out its dietary requirements its habitat location whether it's got any specific things you need to be aware of and check its fish compatibility just to make sure that all the fish that you have at the end of your short list are all going to live in peace and harmony so stage four is the purchasing order or in other words the order in which you're going to purchase these fish so now you've got your short list you know they're all going to live in harmony together now you've got to look at the aggression of each of those fish because what you want to do is add your least aggressive fish first and your most aggressive fish last and the reason for this is the most aggressive fish are going to try and take over as much territory as they can so let's say god help you if you do if you buy two damsels and put those in first then they are going to take that whole aquarium as their own and their whole territory will be that whole tank if you go and add any more fish into that aquarium those damsel fish are just going to chase and chase and chase and bully that new fish until it's dead so you have to add the least territorial fish first and then the most territorial fish last so basically go down your fish list get back onto saltwaterfish.com look at the aggression levels and basically just do one two three four five six seven Put this in your notes on your phone so that each time you go to the fish store, you know exactly which fish you're going to get on this visit. Now, the last part of this is that you want to make sure that you're not adding the fish too quickly. At the start of the video, I spoke about bio load. And what that bio load is, is the waste that needs to be basically converted by your filtration, your nitrifying bacteria. So once your aquarium cycle is finished, go and get a pair of them. Go and get a pair of clowns, for instance. They're really good, hardy fish, really nice. They're not too aggressive and you go put them in your tank. Then you want to wait at least three, four weeks if you can. And the reason for this is that once your clowns go in, you then need a period of time for your nitrifying bacteria to multiply and grow to accommodate the increased bio load that is now in the aquarium because your aquarium is always trying to reach this equilibrium you put two clownfish in or two more fish in your bacteria has got to come up to balance that out to maintain the equilibrium because if you have too much waste in the tank you're going to have high nitrites high nitrates high ammonia high phosphates and your water parameters are not going to be stable so take your time each fish needs to go in at least two weeks apart if you're getting two fish try and make it four weeks and just slow and steady slow and steady is going to make your aquarium far healthier in the long term i know you want to get it full but this is where a bit of patience comes into play so just take your time remember to recap we're going to be adding one inch of fish for every five gallons just add them slowly and with time your aquarium will soon become full and you're going to have a really nice piece of mother nature's ocean sitting in your living room so that's the four stages that i use and the way that i teach people over the years on how to basically look and try and get a list of fish and it really works well it helps you from getting uh, fish that you shouldn't have, fish that are too big, fish that aren't going to live healthy together and they just end up dying and it costs you money. If you're struggling for some ideas on what fish to get, I've got two really, really good helpful articles over on thebeginnersreef.com. I've got one of them is an article with about 20 great fish for beginners and I've got another one 
I think it's about 36 great fish for specifically for nano tanks, so for the smaller aquariums. Um, so go check those out, the links you can find below, uh, and that'll give you some good ideas of, of what a good beginner fish to go into either uh, a bigger aquarium or into your nano aquariums. So the beginner's tip for this video is one that's going to save you a little bit of money and it's one that I found many years ago and it saved me quite a bit of money in the long run. And what it is, is when you go to the grocery store, go down like the Asian food aisle and try and find the packs of nori or seaweed that they use or you use for making sushi. Because you can buy a pack about this thick for about five, six bucks and it's got dozens and dozens of sheets in it. And it's so much cheaper than when you go to the fish store. You go to the fish store and you get the little boxes of uh, pre-prepared seaweed nori and it's, you get like, I don't know, five or six sheets in there for like eight bucks. It's daylight robbery. So go and buy the nori from the grocery store and just stick it all in a big Ziploc bag and each night I just rip a piece off, fold it up, stick it in my clip, throw it in the tank and my tang loves it and then as he shreds it everybody else gets fed. Um, and a bag of that will literally last me six months and that's with me feeding it every day. So it's going to save you a lot of money and just be careful don't go and buy any of the treated nori, just get the pure dry non-salted, non-oiled, nothing on it and you'll go and get lots more for your money from that purchase. So that's it for this video, make sure you check out these videos here, I think you're going to find really really helpful and again if you're new here make sure you hit that subscribe button, got new videos coming out every week so hope you found this enjoyable and I'll see you next time.